Hi and welcome to Etsy Manchester's Meet Our Makers. I'm your host Saskia Wycroft and today we will be interviewing... Start by introducing yourself and telling people where they can find you on like social media. Hi, uh, my name is Ruth Fox. Uh, my company is Blue Fox Ceramics. Uh, I'm on Facebook on Blue Fox Ceramics, uh, Instagram, so um, um, I think that, that is it. That's all I do on social media. So, when did you start making ceramics? Uh, I first learned to throw uh, when I was a long, long time ago when I was 21. But only the basics, I could just sort of basically do ash trays and um, little, little tiny pots. Uh, and then I left it, and then I came back to it, and I left it, and I came back to it, and it's just been like that really. Um, and about early noughties, maybe 2003, I already had my own wheel, but I didn't have a kill. Um, so I didn't really do a lot uh, at all, because obviously you've got no one to fire them, it gets a bit pointless. <laughs> uh, and then we got our kill, we then got our kill. But then I was just doing it for myself, but when I made stuff, uh, I got to see much stuff in the house, I just used to give it away to people, because I don't think it's very good. <laughs> oh, okay. so, and, then, and then I've only really sort of come back into it uh, three years ago. Okay, so, so I mean, did you start Blue Fox Ceramics three years ago then? Um, I think it's around that time, I think it might have been 2000, definitely 2018, uh, yeah. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't, I mean, I went back into it thinking I'll do it for me because I'm a creative person, I haven't done anything creative with my hands for years, um, and I was missing it, and I was, it was going to be, you know, like you have to, if you're creative, you have to do it, otherwise you just, yeah. you just burns you up inside. Um, and then one of the, uh, I was in a studio in Manchester, Clay Studio, where you can uh, have a membership, you can go in and use the equipment there for so many hours a week. And one of the tutors there said, oh, it's not about selling your stuff. And I thought, no, because people are always selling me, why don't you sell it? And I'm like, no, because <laughs> it's rubbish. <laughs> and it's just sort of started from there, really. And then I did, uh, I did um, a show with, um, a fair with uh, Lizzie, who does the uh, Curious Vintage stuff in uh, Wigginton. Um, I think that was 2018. I'm sure you're wrong. 2018. And it was a last minute thing. Somebody texted me on Saturday night and just somebody put a thing on Facebook and said, Does anybody want to do this? And I went, Just go for it, you know, because it was such a quick timeline to do things like a month and I hadn't got the business cards sorted, I hadn't got the logo sorted, I hadn't got anything. So I had to like, and having that time pressure just made me do it, get it all sorted. And I had such a good feedback from people there. It was only, and it was only like two or three hours as well. So it was just a fantastic first attempt at actually sort of making space, really, is what it is for me. It's just making space like make more stuff. What materials and techniques do you use for your work? Uh, well, I use stonework because there are different types of clay for being like that. Um, stonework, obviously, glaze. Um, so there are lots of different techniques and I'm, I'm learning all the time. I just started yesterday having to go with a slip trailer thing I bought. Um, so I never did that when I was doing uh, sort of evening classes and things. Um, techniques I usually use, I usually do a lot of touring on the wheel. Uh, I've recently got a new wheel that helps a lot. Um, it's much better. So I, like, I like to do hand building. I do some modeling in so, um, I like it's that, that's really it, that's it really, so I just, just try different things, but I keep going back to, I have a, I have a thing where I keep going back to, I like to carve, that's one of the main things as well. Okay, so what, what kind of glazes do you use on your work? Um, I'm, I'm only using commercial ones at the moment, uh, just because uh, I don't have that technical knowledge, it's very scientific, <laughs> you know, like it, it really is, because it's not paint, it's not just glass, it's lots of different things. So I use uh, American ones called Amico, uh, a lot of Potter's Choice layered up. Um, and then I've, I've kind of gone through all the ones I want in them now. So I've got, uh, what's it? Uh, uh, Spectrum, that's it, Spectrum Glazer Greens as well. Okay. I mean, you can you can make your own, but at the moment I'm quite happy doing that. You need a lot of space for a lot of time. If you're going to be are, you, are you working on any new products at the moment? Yeah, <laughs> um, I've started. I've started. I sell a lot of plant pots, and I'm just getting a wee bit bored with that. <laughs> so 
so I've started doing peer work on, on things to see if I can do different styles of things. So just to just to sort of give me a challenge or something to do. Um, I still like doing like really big vases and I'm making ramps now. I've started doing ramps. I've only done one, I've got another one here which has been I keep coming back to and carving a bit and leaving it probably coming back to it. So just, <laughs> like I said, I, do, I think a lot of the same thing uh, same thing. You can get stuck in a rut and I tend to get bored. I mean, the whole idea for me to make stuff is stuff that I get pleasure out of making. And if I can find a home for it, great. Where do you sell your work other than Etsy? Um, Instagram, people contact me directly. So I have quite a few uh, inquiries and sales directly from Instagram. Um, that's quite good. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, what else? There's a little shopping when you turn uh, when it's open. The curious, I'm actually curious arts. Um, that's quite a nice little shop. I've not really tried other galleries because it, you've got to watch if you're uh, if you're paying them to take your work and then paying commission and then you don't have any sales to be able to, you could be paying about two hundred pounds a month to say the four shops and people get twenty pounds back in. So yeah. I like to make sure it's balanced. I mean, I, will, I probably would look for more outlets after this is all over. But... Yeah. Laura Gray asks, uh, how long did it take you to master throwing? I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rachel... I mean, I mean, just for centering it, yeah. the hardest bit is centering, and I probably spent a uh, whole of one term, uh, and it's only like two to say three hours a week um, on a wheel, just learning to sort of centre, um, and not, I'm not just throw back to trays. Uh, and obviously it's like drive, learn to drive, so the more practice you get, the better and the easier it is, the better shooter you have, the more hands on, you can do one to one, the quicker it is. No, so it took me a while to get that, so that's a bit better. Yeah. Uh, so Rachel Sanders asks, why blue? Uh, when I was a kid at school, we didn't do a lot of ceramics, but then when I went to uh, other art colleges, we did a little bit of ceramics. All we ever get was green and brown and oatmeal and you know, horrible, mucky, murky colours, and maybe yeah. more blue. So I don't like blue anyway. So I just decided, I just went on a mission. When, when I was in the play studio, they had one or two blues. And then I said, well, I'm not going near the browns and the greens and the oatmeals. So uh, then I went on a mission to find a, a perfect blue. <laughs> ah, okay. That's quite nice. Um, person asks, are the colours and textures in your pots inspired by anything specific? Um, I, just, I love colour. I love I love the depth that you get with the layers. Um, one or two, I, I had to go with. I was really inspired with impressionists and uh, that really soft painting effect that they get. So I had to go with that last year. I probably will come back to that. So that's the kind of thing. Or, 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 overall, I just get ideas and I'm just like, oh, well, that would be really nice if you like that. But I struggle uh, getting those ideas. On paper, quick enough to go get some time to try and write a quick note to get it done. You know. Okay. Yeah. Um, she also asks, uh, do you have any tips on packaging cer ceramics for postage? Um. Yeah. I mean, the, the best thing I, I use bubble. I've just got some meatball bubble actually, which is biodegradable bubble wrap. Oh. Cool. I, uh, yeah. Um. Uh, if it's going to the UK, securely wrap it in bubble wrap. Make sure there's no voids in your boxes because if there is and they drop it, uh, that's when you get damaged. If it's going overseas, a uh, double box it, it's a bit of pain, but that's what I have to do. So it's a box within a box and bubble wrap around both. <laughs> and that seems yeah. to work. <laughs> do you have a favourite piece that you make yourself? Yeah, I I'll, I'll like big pieces. And then I, if I, if I, when it comes out, they can't really like it. I have to be looking at it all the time, so I put it on the windowsill in the living room where I sit. <laughs> and so for me, I've got, um, I've got I made this blue uh, lamp carpet, and it took me hours and hours, and I've got a really nice lamp shade on it. I think I sent you the photograph of it, so that's one of my favourites at the moment, which yeah. I'm not selling. <laughs> I've got a pot that, I've got a couple of pots that I'm not allowed to sell because I'm not allowed to sell. Um, and you we'll won't see those anywhere <laughs> on my Instagram. Okay, that's good. Um, so where do you see your business in five years from now? I like a bigger studio. <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to be selling into galleries rather than gift shops, that would be ideal. 
I'd like to be more of a studio potter than sort of a craft fair type potter, but I don't know how realistic that is. I'd have to, I think things have to change up a lot, you know, maybe the website would have to calm down and then I can develop more on the ceramics because it's not a big time job. And why did you start selling on Etsy? Um, I don't remember, when did I sit actually? I thought, well, it's a ready-made platform. It doesn't cost a lot to join. It's, it doesn't cost anything on a monthly basis. You only pay like 20p to so put a, an item on for three months. Uh, you haven't really got a lot to lose, have you? Yeah. Um, you don't really have to do a lot. I mean, the hardest thing is taking the photographs and, one, and then, uh, but it didn't really do anything for, gosh, 18 months. Um, you know, I don't know what I was expecting, you know, if everyone takes the place, it takes time. So, that's how I got started. I don't know how I did it. I must have been Googling it and looking around, but that's not something I can think of if I saw a pot somewhere. It must have come up in this attention. Uh, do you have uh, any tips for anyone looking to sell on Etsy? Uh, have a look for what price point. Have a look for what other people are selling if they're selling something similar and what they think is their, their sort of price point. Um, you need a lot of items on that spot and you need, I reckon, at least 70 over 70 items to get seen. Check your tags, make sure if you, when you put things on, go back and check them and that they are actually coming up after an hour or so. And then just keep speaking if they're not. <laughs> so subscribe to the Etsy Manchester channel uh, to get lots more uh, behind the makeup. It is. Thank you so much for watching the video. There should be somewhere on screen for you to click to watch some of our other videos and also subscribe to our channel.